I really like this look. Hmm. Hey you, what up? Mariam here, welcome to my channel or welcome back. It's Faves X Fails time. If you are new to my channel and you're unfamiliar with the Faves X Fails, let me introduce you. This is a series that I like to conduct monthly episodes or installments in which I talk about my monthly favorite products and makeup and also apply them to my face so that I can show you what they look like rather than tell you. I also talk about some of the products that have not worked for me, specifically why they have not worked for me, and I also elaborate on some of my monthly reviews. So for example, in today's video, I'm going to elaborate on the Huda Beauty foundation that I love, that I reviewed, and I'm going to compare it to the Hourglass foundation and also answer some of your questions about this product, specifically from the comments of that particular review video. So I hope all of this makes sense. I hope you find it useful and that you enjoy this video. Remember to subscribe, hit that notification bell so you can see all of my Wednesday and Sunday's videos. And now let's get to it. Faves X fails, because you can't have good without evil, duh. First things first, let's go down the list. I actually have a new favorite primer this month and I'm talking about the Pacifica Hemp Blur Pore Balancing Primer. So this guy here is $13. I honestly probably wouldn't have even tried this product unless you guys would have told me that Pacifica is actually a really nice brand that's available at Ulta. And so based off of your recommendations, I actually decided to give it a chance. And guess what? I like it. So now when they say primer, generally what the primer is supposed to do is balance out your skin, it's supposed to minimize your pores, perfect your texture, and it's also supposed to help your foundation stay on a little bit longer. Now, I feel like that is a lot of claims and a lot of promises for any primer. There isn't a primer out on the market that does all of those things. Some mattify, some smooth, some help to glue your foundation onto your skin. No primer really does all of those things. Truth be told, I kind of think that primers in general are just a little bit gimmicky. I personally still use them because I do need smoothing, so I prefer smoothing or mattifying options for my skin. This one I like because clearly you can see that my skin is now a little bit more matte and it's a little bit more smooth looking. It feels very cooling on the skin, just helps me feel a little bit better about my skin before I apply my foundation. So for that, I like it. Plus, it's really affordable, $13. Next up, I wanna talk about foundations. I have two favorite foundations to talk about this month. Yeah, two. One, you probably already guessed, is the Huda Beauty new foundation stick that I have been raving about. I've been wearing this foundation nonstop since I reviewed it. I will include the review down below and also up here for you guys if you haven't checked it out. Basically, I love this foundation stick a lot because it has that very natural looking coverage. It gives my skin that filtered effect without looking cakey, without looking heavy, without looking too much for 2020. You know what I mean? Now in my video review comments section for this product, a lot of people asked how this compares to the mother of all mothers, the Hourglass Foundation Stick. And I will tell you this, these products are different. This $39, 12.5 grams, product. First of all, you get more for your money with this one. But secondly, they're just totally different finishes. The Hourglass is, I would describe it as a very, very glam, full coverage type of foundation stick. It is the kind of foundation stick that if you look your absolute worst, when you slap it on, you will look your absolute best. But it's not a lot of product for the money. It's very, very pricey. And it's not a product that I would recommend for everyday wear. It's one of those wedding day type of products. This one, on the other hand, is something that I would recommend for everyday wear. It's not gonna give you that super flawless face base, although you can build it up to look as flawless as possible, but it's a little bit more approachable, not only with its price, but also with its finish. So that's that. For today's video, I actually am going to use a different foundation, something that I have never talked about on my channel, but it's a foundation that I have been reviewing and testing out and wearing and falling in love with for the past three months. The reason why I was so hesitant is because this is a pricey one. So I am talking about this or say cosmetics skin perfecting foundation with hyaluronic acid this is what it looks like basically it's one ounce of product 
It's got a pump here. So I don't know if you guys have heard of Orsay Cosmetics, but this is a line of strictly foundation and skin finish products. This brand basically specializes in foundations for Asian skin tones and for Asian skin concerns, which is why I was initially so drawn to them. Let me give you some facts. So this is a semi-luminous serum foundation hybrid, oil-free hyaluronic acid based foundation, and it's supposed to be texture transforming. Now the shade that I am is 040 Nove, and I believe there's only about seven or eight shades in the range. They're all kind of in the medium tone spectrum. They do have some lighter shades, but they're very limited with their shade range. However, this shade, Nove, is probably the closest match to my actual natural born skin tone. Like the skin tone that I am meant to have, the one that matches my neck, the one that matches the rest of my body, the one that looks like me when I was a child. Now this foundation is full coverage. You can apply it with your fingers or with a brush, but I've honestly been loving the application with my fingers. And what I love about it is how smoothing and transforming it is. Now right now, as you probably noticed, I'm breaking out a lot, so I have a lot of redness and irritation and discoloration in my skin. But this foundation, because it's so lightweight, it doesn't feel like it's clogging my pores, doesn't feel like a mask on my face. In fact, it feels like a treatment. For some reason though, I'm noticing that this foundation is not agreeing with the primer that I applied underneath, so it's kind of rolling together. I've been wearing it for several months, sometimes with a primer, sometimes without a primer, never with this one, and it's never had like a rolling issue before. So that's fine. That's just, I guess, what happens sometimes in these videos when you talk about products. Anyway, so that was just like one layer of foundation. And although you could still see my imperfections, you can immediately see the improvement in my tone and in my texture. So I'm just going to add a little bit more, just specifically to those areas that need a little bit more coverage. And again, I'm going to blend it out with my finger, kind of just pat it on. Just look how pretty it looks. I feel like it looks very, very healthy, especially on problematic skin like mine. And so for that, I have been a huge fan of this foundation. I don't wear this often. And the reason why I don't wear this often, and it's also the reason why I was kind of hesitant to talk about this product, is because this foundation is a uh, 89 dollars you guys so yes it's skin perfecting yes it has amazing coverage and i absolutely love this shade match for me but it is a very very pricey one the good thing is that you can get these little samples from their website i feel like there's different options they sell them as a single unit or as three in a package so there's definitely some options before you can actually commit to purchasing a full size anyway enough about that I'm ready to talk about a fail. Today's fail in the foundation category goes to It Cosmetics Your Skin But Better Foundation Plus Skin Care. Okay, so the problem with this particular product is that it's just not great. I don't love the undertones. Their warms lean very much neutral, like kind of on the orangey side. Their neutrals lean very cool, and I haven't even tried the cools, but I imagine they are definitely not for me. This $40 foundation didn't work for me. And actually, I will say that most IT Cosmetics BB and CC creams are not compatible with my skin type. Unfortunately, because I am acne prone, there is something in these foundations that irritate my skin. I break out the moment that I apply this on and it takes me a good week to get over my breakouts. This has happened with every single one of IT Cosmetics products, except one that they unfortunately discontinued, but beware. Do a patch test, like somewhere inconspicuous, like behind your jaw or something like that. Similarly, I was kind of also very disappointed with this very unique, but kind of gimmicky brow power filler, also from IT Cosmetics. Now this is a $24 product. At first, I was a little bit intrigued by the unique looking brush. It kind of looks like an insect. It has some tiny little micro needles and then the tip is a felt tip. So I guess what you can do is apply the product with the tip and then somehow brush it out. I get that that's the idea. Unfortunately, it just didn't work. The tip applicator was way too messy. It was way too uncomfortable to use. So if I were to use this product, I would probably just get rid of this altogether. I would load some up on the back of my hand and perhaps use a little tiny brow brush to draw some strokes. The product itself isn't terrible, but the applicator is fussy. It's 
not user friendly and moreover I just didn't really get it. Fail! So speaking of brows, I haven't really found a new product that has been better than my 24 hour brow setter from Benefit along with the brow micro filling pen and dark brown that I've been using for this very laminated boy brow look. So I've been sticking to that. There's no new brow products that I want to mention this month. Alright, it's time for concealer. I'm gonna use my Charlotte Tilbury Magic Away Concealer. This is not a new product, it's not a new discovery, it's just something that I haven't used in a few months and I picked it back up and started using it again and then I just was reminded of how awesome this product is. The shade that I'm using right now is 5 which is a little bit bright. I could probably use a 5.5 or 6 or even a 6.5 but if you want to be glam with it, 5 works. I'm gonna let that concealer just like sit there for a sec. I'm gonna give it a chance to get a little tacky and then I'm gonna start blending it out with this little brush. This is from Bedellium Tools or Delium Tools number 788 brush. Just a nice super soft angled fluffy brush. But like, look at that. That is a glamorous under eye. All right, so for my powder today, again, nothing new. Just sticking to my Airbrush Flawless Finish by Charlotte T. If you haven't yet picked up this brush, blush, powder. <laughs> I'm sorry. I only had two cups of coffee today and I need three before I film. If you haven't yet picked up this powder, then I'm gonna give you another chance to pick it up. I'm gonna link it down below as well as all the favorite products that I'm talking about today so that you can check them out. Because you guys, this powder is life-changing. It's so incredibly smoothing and just so flawless. It will change your makeup game. You can apply it throughout the day and it will never get cakey. It's just that bitch. Also, because it has a little bit of color, it actually does a great job of further perfecting your skin tone. And I feel like these two products together, the Orsay Hyaluronic Perfecting Foundation and the Charlotte T Airbrush Flawless Finish, just together, these two are a great marriage. So now I'm just lightly brushing that powder all over my oily zones, kind of just setting it in place. If you're not oily, you probably don't even need to set this foundation because it almost has one of those unique self-setting aspects to it, but I like a more matte look. All right, for the under eye, again, nothing new. Same old, mother pat. Just gonna set that and forget that. Face base is looking very on camera friendly. I see it in my monitor, I see it. Shall we do a little iPhone test? Let's do it. All right, this is what the skin is looking like up close. Pretty nice, huh? Not bad at all. The under eye is looking so vibrant and bright, girl. Wow, those pores, what pores? Yes, yes, skin finish. Okay, next up, let's talk about the fun category. Let's talk about some eyeshadow palettes, shall we? Shall we actually zoom in for this part? Skin finish though. All right, so now that Lee has hit us with that zoom, I'm ready to talk about some of my favorite and not so favorite eyeshadow palettes of the month. So first being the one and only Pat McGrath Celestial Divinity Palette. Yes, that's the one. Here she is in all of her glory, looking beautiful, celestial, and divine. The colors are stunning. Of course, I did a separate review specifically on this palette. I created a look. I also wore it for my birthday a few weeks ago, a couple weeks ago, one week ago, 10 days ago, 10 days ago. My birthday was just 10 days ago, October 23rd. Use this palette for my birthday look. I love all the shades. Everything is just so striking. The shimmery shades are super unique. There's different types of formulations in here. That beautiful wet foil look as well as micro fine glitters. The mattes perform great. I, I mean, this is probably going to be my most favorite palette of the year. At $78, I feel like this is a really, really great deal, you guys. Look at her in all of her divinity. Of course, I'm gonna dip into this palette today, but first I actually wanna talk about some other products from this Celestial Divinity collection that I, although loved, I don't feel like they are worth the price. Specifically, I'm talking about the eyeshadow quads. Now, these are four pan palettes, really cute, pretty colors, but these are only $20 cheaper than the big palette. I actually don't really get it. Yes, the pans here are smaller than here, but I just don't see the need for a four pan $58 palette when there is an 18 pan $78 palette that includes the same vibe. If I were to recommend anything from that collection, of course I would happily recommend the big palette because it's just worth the money. All right, another palette that I really, really love this month is the Naughty Nude by Huda Beauty. I feel like Huda had two back-to-back -back hits, first with the foundation, and then two weeks later she came out with the Naughty Nude palette. 
which is the sister palette to the new nude palette. But in my opinion, I just love the naughty nude a little bit more. It spoke to me because the colors are a little bit more punchy. They're more on the chocolate, mauve browny wine spectrum, which I gravitate more towards personally. Also, there's some really cool textures in here, like these swirls, and also this uh, slippery jelly shade, which is like a gloss that you can add not just on your lids, but also on your cheekbones. I like that. I love the inspiration behind the palette to embrace your own sexuality, to embrace your sexy, to be powerful with it. I <laughs> really like this. This is a $67 palette. Just watch my video on it. Cause that look that I created with this palette was probably one of my favorite looks of the last year. Yup, I said it. Before I go on, I definitely have to mention some fails. Unfortunately, this month, um, these Rare Beauty eyeshadow palettes just, they weren't a hit for me. Specifically speaking, I didn't really love this Magnetic Spirit palette. So these are both $25 palettes. There's six shades in each one. This story to me has been done so many times and it looks identical to so many palettes and so many colors that you guys probably already own. That to me, it was just a bit of a snooze fest. Packaging is nice, it's kind of sturdy, but it's also reminding me of Estee Lauder, so it doesn't really feel youthful and young. I didn't really get it. It's kind of just a womp womp situation for me. But the quality of the eyeshadows is nice, especially in the green version of that palette. This one is called Confident Energy, and it's just a little bit more fresh, I would say, but not for the season either. Like, where are we in the fall months to be wearing this blue? Of course, you could wear whatever colors you want, regardless of the season, but I didn't really get it. Enough about all that. Let's apply my faves to my face. So today I wanna go for like a very wearable, maybe bronzy chocolatey look. Let's do that. I'm gonna pick up this uh, Morphe X Jaclyn Hill JH41 brush, and I'm going to dip into this shade here, kind of like a nice mahogany. Just gonna go ahead and slap that across my lid from corner to corner. Do you see that payoff? That is the kind of payoff you pay for. And how much is this shadow? Alexa, what's 78 divided by 18? 78 divided by 18 is 4.3333. $4.33 for an eyeshadow of Pat McGrath? Come on, it's a no-brainer. Alexa, what's 58 divided by four? 58 divided by four is 14.5. 433 versus 1450? Really? I don't think so. Alexa, what's 25 divided by six? 25 divided by six is 4.1667. And I would most certainly rather pay $4 for one of these shadows than for one of these shadows. Thank you, Alexa. I rest my case. And I mean, look how great it applies without the primer. I feel like when it comes to palettes, it's also very much about the color story. Alexa, read me the notification. An Amazon Fresh order was delivered. Containing 24 items. Whoa! I'm gonna take a clean brush, no name, no number, and I'm gonna blend out this shade just to kind of make it a little bit softer and smudgier. I'm not blending it within the fold, just outside of the fold, outside of my actual crease, just like that. Okay, next up, I'm gonna close this one out. I'm gonna go for the Naughty palette now, because like I said, I want a brown story, and there's so many browns to choose from here. So I'm gonna go for this shade, Arouse. Arouse is a really, really pretty shade. I used it in my Naughty review. I'm gonna use it again today. Honestly, the look that I'm creating, you could probably just create with this palette, but I did wanna show you the quality of that amazing matte from the Pat palette. All right, so this one I'm just gonna layer right on top, over the fold, over the part that I just blended out. So it's kind of just blending into each other like that. I really want this look to be wearable because whenever I do my Faves X Fails, I always want it to be a very attainable look, something that you guys can actually utilize and not necessarily for going out, but for every day. I know there's plenty of people who don't wear makeup on a daily basis, but there are plenty of those who do. All right, gonna take a big old brush. This is Wayne Goss 03. I'm gonna blend, blend, blend all this out. And if you feel like you've removed too much and just slap it back on, you know how it's done. I cannot believe how pretty this is turning out without a primer. It has just like such a lovely wearable aspect to it because it feels very blended and it just feels very easy and attainable. I'm always into that sort of thing. All right, so that is good for now. I'm gonna add this shade right here, which is a swirl, but I'm gonna kind of dip my finger into the lighter part of the swirl because although you can definitely swirl them together for a more brown look, kind of leaning 
more towards this cream. And I'm just gonna stamp that to the center because it's gonna give me just a pinch of a different texture. Do you see that? How it almost looks like a gloss. And I love how it's not shifting any of my eyeshadows around. It's just adding this like nice, mousse-like texture. It's funny because the name of this shade is hard, but it's actually giving me so much softness and so much like velvet vibes. I'm kind of obsessed. All right, I'm gonna pick up this shade here called Naughty, which is similar to that mahogany shade. Perhaps maybe just a little bit darker. And I'm gonna darken my inner corner, and also right here. Also gonna darken the outer corner, just like that. Delicious. And then once again, give it that nice blend. Easy, but so good. I'm gonna reach for that same shade. And then I'm gonna pick up a little bit from the brown and use that to line my lower lash line. And when I say line, I actually meant smudge, just like that. Do you see how it's just like messy, but so sexy? So this shade is actually pretty unique because you almost get three colors in this one. You get the nude, you get the chocolate, and then you get the swirl of the two, which makes like a nice coffee and cream color. But basically you could use this to smudge, to line, to add some accents, to darken. I'm kind of a fan. So right now I'm actually using a Huda Beauty brush from, I don't remember which collection, but it's basically the Shine and Line Dual Ended Brush. And I'm gonna use the spongy side to clean it up underneath. And then whatever's remaining on this brush, I'm just gonna use that to seal that cream and to blend out that smoky. Sultry. And then for my erase method, clean brush. And then just going right underneath and cleaning that up. Boom, boom. I'm gonna add just a smidge of this shade Hypnotic to the brow bone, just to kind of seal everything, add a little bit more interest and blend. And I think we're kind of done with the eyes for now. I'm gonna go back to the Pat palette and see if there's any options for the inner corner. I do want just a little bit of bling. So I'm gonna go for this shade right here. I don't know what it's called, but it's really pretty and it's calling my name. Just gonna add a slight bit of shimmer to the inner corner that suddenly dresses it up. It makes it a little bit more night appropriate than day appropriate, but I feel like a subtle sparkle like that is good enough. All right, I'm done with the eyes. First, I'm gonna curl my lashes. And I'm gonna tell you what my current favorite mascara is. Reminder, this only works with the Laura Mercier Lash Curler. Links below. So I actually discovered a new favorite mascara this month and it is this Mison Collagen Curling Fix Mascara. I got this one from YesStyle in their advent calendar and it's just such a lovely formula. Although this isn't a waterproof formula, it absolutely does not smudge on my lashes. So I guess maybe it's meant for Asian lashes or for the Asian eye shape slash Asian lashes combo. Basically what happens is with short lashes like mine and my eye shape, which has this inner epicanthic fold, regular mascaras tend to smudge and smear and create a very unflattering stain right here in the inner corner of my eye, which is why I can't wear them. So I always go for either a waterproof formula or just something that doesn't smudge in the inner corner. So if you have an eye shape that is similar to mine, and if you have shorter lashes like mine, you might also encounter this problem, even if you don't necessarily have any Asian in you. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, I love this mascara formula so much. I love the way that it makes my lashes look to the point where I don't even wanna wear falsies. I feel like this is enough. I'm loving this brownie look. I'm loving the lashes. I'm loving the brows and just like the whole combo is really nice. However, I do feel like I need just a little bit of liner in my waterline. So I'm going to grab my Charlotte T pillow talk and just give myself a little bit of a frame. See that just looks so much better. Next up for the lips, I have a couple of favorites this month. I am loving these new nudes from Dominique Cosmetics. They are so gorgeous, specifically these shades here. Pretty Natural, Nude Cocoa, and Kaleida. These are just so, so stunning. Like just super stunning nudes, right? And I feel like all three of these are the colors that I have going on in my eyes. Ooh, but a little too monochromatic for what I'm going for. I also wanna show you these Peri Para lipsticks that I just discovered, and they are so, so great. I have two colors here, number three and number 12. Number three, Orange Cookie, is just so fall appropriate, isn't it? Look at that. And then number 12, Naturally Healthy, probably like your perfect everyday color. Ooh, perhaps this is what I wanna go for today. Naturally Healthy it is. I'm gonna realign using my Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk. I love this one so much and I can't stop recommending it because it is the ultimate lip cheat. And it works with the majority of colors out there. I 
I'm telling you, this mat is just so, so comfortable and it's just so texture perfecting. I love this color so much. And now that I'm almost done with the face, I want to mention one more fail. And this is from a big brand, you guys. This is a major fail that I was really surprised by, especially when I conducted the initial swatches on my Insta stories. So... <laughs> YSL, a major fashion house and a beauty brand that I love, YSL Beauty, created these, um, they're called the Slim Glow Matte Lipsticks. And basically the slim is the shape and the size of the lipstick and the glow matte is the finish or the texture. First of all, I don't really get how something can be matte and also have a glow that just sounds like an oxymoron. And when I swatch these, an oxymoron is exactly what it looked like to me. I didn't love the swatches. I'm gonna show them off right here, but basically just to show you what I'm talking about. This is just one of those not super pigmented, not matte, not glossy. It's kind of just like a half ass product. I'm so sorry to put it this way. The colors are so pretty and I wanted them to work so bad. But girl, for $39, this is just it ain't cutting it. This just, this ain't cutting it. I'm sorry. I didn't love these. The colors, although pretty, and yes, you can probably build them up, but I don't get the whole patchy vibes. I'm sorry. It just wasn't my cup of tea. And ultimately, for $39 lipstick, I expect a lot more. Let me know if I'm wrong. As always, call me out if you disagree with me. But this is my opinion, and I'm sticking to it. You guys, I'm so excited. Fenty came out with a new cream blush. Remember, there was 10. Now there's a number 11. And it is in the shade Fenty Glow, which is the original gloss bomb. And basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to slap it onto my face. I love that it's inspired by the gloss, but it's actually a blush for the holidays. And so the blush comes with a diamond and Balm Highlighter, which is also in the same shade. And to me, I really appreciate the fact that Fenty isn't regurgitating the same old products and just repackaging them in holiday packaging just for the holidays. I like the fact that they're coming out with new products. In this case, a new texture, a new product for their iconic shade. That makes me excited. And you guys already know that I love these blushes. I reviewed them. I thought the shades were great. And I think that this shade just goes perfectly with today's look. I love that these blushes can be applied over foundation or over your powder. They don't disrupt anything underneath. They're not too greasy. They're not difficult to use. They're just really right. I'm gonna add just a bit of that diamond bomb on top. Not as a highlighter, but almost as a blush, just for like a little sheen. I feel like that worked. This right here is my final look using my faves, but not my fails. I'm really pleased with this look. It's exactly what I was going for. Something that's very wearable, very fall appropriate, very easy, but kind of demure. Can be for the daytime or for the nighttime. I had such a great time playing around with all of these products because I'm already well familiar with them. And I wanted to just give you a little bit more information on why these are my favorites and why I'm going to continue using them. So hopefully you guys love these faves x fails videos. Hopefully you find them useful. And as long as you do, I'm going to continue making them. So with that said, I love you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what your faves X fails are for the month of October. And now I am zooming on out so that you can check out some of my other videos, more faves X fails, and also some of my recent videos. I love you guys. Mwah.